fishers since birth. They've become farmers for life. Once igniting dynamite to fish, they now infuse dynamic growth to live. Sometimes all we really need is a better alternative. My boss, uh, Mr. Jose Rodolfo Lim, uh, told me that uh, the work is not here in the city, but out there in an island in Bohol. So we, we had a trip, uh, we took a ship in a small boat, and I was very surprised when uh, we reached the island, we still moved out of the island and into the middle of the sea. When we arrived there, I saw a small house in the middle of the sea, and they said, that's our house. When we climbed the uh, at the farmhouse, there was a small platform, a uh, few people there, three or four people who were uh, cutting, preparing some seaweed seedlings. And then there was a small uh, room for my, for, my, for my accommodation, and that was it. The idea of seaweed is to the Zeno Corporation. There is a small area in the Danahon Reef that is in the So, the result is Nag-encourage ang manager sa Gino, Mr. Lim, uh, pagtanong sa mga tao. Seaweeds are processed into carrageenan, which has many important uses in industry as ingredient in foods. Pharmaceuticals and various other products. We were about four or five people at that time. Yeah, me, Mr. Lim, there was Mr. Cabanero, Silverio, and uh, two or three others. Maayo ang kahimtang o makatabang sa katawahan. Hindi ha, nagsugod ang mga katawahan ni Singutanan paglihok para sa pagtanong sa guso. Sa nidad na kong 15 anyos, isugod ang uban-uban sa kong amahan sa pagpanagat. Panagat nga illegal uh, using uh, dynamite hangtod nga iabot na og mga pila ka tuig gani ako nasakpan mga lina tong akong pangita na priso ko sod sa tong kubuan og kaloy sa Dios na buhian ko ni buag yo ko kay kuya mo sa gayog lakpan ako gusab hangtod nga iabot ning pangita nga pangguso To the people of Hinotanan Island in Bien Unido, Bohol, living in close proximity to an important marine resource was initially something they took for granted. For centuries, the Danahon Bank double barrier reef, which spans the provinces of Bohol, Cebu, Leyte, and southern Leyte, has provided sustenance and livelihood to coastal communities within the area. This huge sea bank of corals and breeding area for fish also acted as protection against storms and typhoons hitting the province. But decades of illegal fishing and over-harvesting of marine products led to the decline of the reef and subsequently poor fish catch among townsfolk. In 1978, the enterprising activities of Genu Philippines, a private seaweed exporting firm, became an unforeseen step in reversing the tide. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, prior to 1978, uh, the company had trials in Hilotongan Island and they were not very successful. So they were looking for uh, another uh, site for, uh, for seaweed farming where water movement and, uh, is, is much better than Ilutongan Island. 
So they tried um, the Nahon Reef. The depth of the water also matters a lot because during uh, low tide, uh, the water is just about uh, half. Uh, so the, the plants are not exposed to, to the sun. And, and of course, because uh, the reef is uh, in, the, in the middle of the sea. So both ways, when the tide is uh, going down or, or the water is coming back, there is strong water movement. What started as a research and testing activity for Geno Philippines slowly flourished into a full-fledged livelihood endeavor for the people of the island. Through word of mouth and the dedicated passion of a village fisher, the good news about seaweed farming soon spread. Among uh, Silver, uh, uh, he is from the island. He stays two weeks in the farm, then goes back to the island after after two weeks. He tells uh, he still uh, tells the the people uh, what's going on out there, and then uh, that the seaweed uh, is is being cultivated. That's something a uh, very new uh, kind of, uh, of idea to the people because they've never uh, they, uh, tried uh, cultivation. So we told them uh, this is what's going on, and then uh, if you'd like to try, there's a big area here where you can do your own farming. We can assist you with. Nylon lines, we even uh, give them lines, pay back later, and then we promise them we will buy. Uh, when we started buying, it was, I think, about between um, uh, two to three pesos per kilo. The price was uh, were quite good with that kind of price at that time. Uh, for example, because at that time, one gallon of, of gasoline was 450. So it really uh, uh, motivated a lot uh, the people in the village to, to try civet farming. In time, news about the island's excellent seaweed potentials lured other firms to come to Hingotanan. So all of a sudden, I think the whole of 1979, the, the reef was almost full of seaweed farming activity. So the produ production went up quite, uh, quite a lot. I think the market uh, at that time was not really big enough to absorb the production. So there was also some, some fluctuation of prices after that. So towards... Uh, towards 1981, there was also a drop in price. In 1984, Bohol was directly hit by a strong typhoon. Everything was washed away. For a while, the people went back to fishing. But knowing that destructive means could bring damage to their seaweed farms, little by little, a profound change happened. 